you have some evil purpose in mind. No. Go the men among you and serve the Lord, for that is what you have been asking. And they were driven out of Pharaoh's presence. May the good Lord add a blessing to his word and write it in our hearts that we may be blessed throughout the week. Not without our children, it's a statement in which each and every believing parent should be able to say. It is a personal covenant that each and every believing parent should take to heart and make before the Lord. The world that we live in, as we know, is changing. It has changed. It keeps changing. But something more even important is the fact that they've changed the way we think, the way we do things, even especially the way we raise up our children. In actual fact, the government is raising our children. The internet is raising our children. Social media is raising our children. Therefore, it is possible to be present physically in the life of a child, but be absent in a way of raising a child. It is possible to be absent while you are there each and every day of their lives. It is possible to be absent while it is you who takes them to school each and every morning and after school. It is you who kiss them good night every evening. It is possible to be absent and someone else be raising your children. Teach them what is right and what is wrong. And I must tell you, friends, for as long as you will not have a direction that you give to your children, as long as not direct influence your children on how they should love and worship God, you are absent from their lives. All the lovely things that you do for your children, all the wonderful ways that you say, all those things that are good and you are doing for good and it's wonderful. It makes the children happy. It motivates them to know that they are loved so that they don't go out there to look for love where they will not find love. All that is good, but it is useless unless somehow there's a direction that points to the love of God and to the worship of the Almighty God. The Israelites, they've been stuck here in a godless world, in a godless land for over 400 years. Even when they tried to be godly, there was always evil before them, evil around them, disrupting their unity, disrupting their devotion to God. They wanted out of the land in order that they may go and worship God, in order that they may go and devote their lives fully to God. But Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, refused them to go. He will not let them go since he wanted them to remain slaves in his land, to be worshippers of idols just like him. And in the midst of all that, we all know, God raised Moses and he raised Aaron to work together to confront this enemy, to confront the situation, to free the people of God out of Egypt. God always purpose that his people will be free out of slavery, out of slavery of sin, out of slavery of anything that is anti-God in this world. He sent his servant to do so. But the enemy will always resist. In our passage this afternoon, we find Pharaoh refusing again to let these people go. Refusing regardless God's command. What is God's command? Let my people go. And Pharaoh will not do so. But what, what does Pharaoh do? He gives them a stipulation. He says, I will let you go by the stipulation to let them go. Stipulation to worship God, their Lord. So this afternoon, I want us to see this stipulation in a form of an offer which Pharaoh is giving to Moses and the church. But also, what is the response of Moses, which should be the response of the church? And what does that lead to? So what is the offer? Verse number eight. Go save the Lord your God. That is the offer. It sounds good. Go worship the Lord your God. This offer comes after God has threatened Pharaoh with plagues. That he will send plagues into Egypt. Since Pharaoh will refuse constantly to let God's people go. He will not let the Hebrews go. And God threatened him. And Pharaoh now says something that 
seems to be good until you pay careful attention. Go serve the Lord. So Moses and Aaron, they came to Pharaoh and they demanded complete freedom for the Hebrews. But Pharaoh will not allow it. Instead, Pharaoh makes this offer. Please notice, as I was saying, it is very important to see the enemy has not changed his mind. The enemy will never change his mind against God's people. He may say ways that seems good, ways that we can accept and think that we're working together, but he has not changed his mind. Moses understood this offer. He understood how horrible, how evil this offer was because this offer has conditions. This offer has something in it to dishonor God. What is the condition? Verse number 8 again. But which one are to go? You go, but not all of you. Go, please God, but not completely. Leave something out for me. Go, but which one are to go? This offer says it depends on you which one are to go to worship God. It depends on you in your own individual families which one are to come to the service and to come to worship God. Some can choose to stay, it's okay, because someone else will represent you before God. Let some remain behind. Especially the children. Moses understood this dishonor God. How? Because God said, let my people go. Not let some of my people go. Let my people go. Most understood worship. That God wants to be worshipped by his people. The families together, their children and the parents together. Moses understood that if the enemy will get hold of the children, there will be no brighter future. He understood that. Now he stands before Pharaoh. He realized that the enemy wants to get hold of the children so that there's no future for God's church. Do we also understand that? That if we give up on our children, there is no future for God's church, but wilderness in God's house. Moses understood that the offer was very evil. So he stands and said, God said, let my people go. There is always a confrontation between the enemy and God's people throughout all generations, today, yesterday, tomorrow. There will always be a confrontation between the enemy of God and God's people. Evil will confront good. We need to understand that. But most importantly, we must never be afraid to confront, to stand against the enemy. We must never be afraid to wrestle him. To stand for what is good, what honors God, what gives God glory, we must stand for it. Moses was not afraid. He is standing before this king, the king of Egypt, the greatest king at the time. What does he do? He stands before him. He demands liberty for God's people. He demands freedom of worship. Not just freedom so that we may free and do whatever we want to do, build churches, enjoy and have dancing clubs and so on in the house. No, he wants freedom of worship. He wants people to devote themselves to God. But as he did that, the enemy also responds. So as you demand something, the enemy responds because the enemy always responds. And in his response, he makes an offer which might, sound, which might sound good in other people's ears. But the question is, is this offer really sincere? Is this something to be excited about? Remember, God's people had not been worshipping God for a very long time. They are thirsty. They are longing. They desire to worship God. Now, here comes an offer. After a long period of time, sitting at home and doing nothing, but praying together perhaps with your children. Now here's an offer that you can go and congregate together and have this true worship unto God. It sounds good. Many today will say, well, it is better than nothing. It is better than not worshiping at all. But Moses will not agree to that. Oh, church, we need men and women who will stand for the true worship of God and read between the lines to understand what is true and what is false. Pharaoh says, choose among you. Choose in your family who will be going to God. 
And this someone we represent to you as our saying, he gives them this offer. But as you read, as you understand this offer, as I'm bringing it before you, you can see that this offer teaches us that we must never think that the devil will always bring something that is clearly evil. This is not evil. Go worship the Lord your God. There's nothing evil about going and worshiping God your Lord. But what did God say? Let my people go, not some of my people go. Go worship God, but leave your children behind. And it's always the case. Just leave the children behind. Go be spiritual and let your children be worldly. There will come a time in their lives they will ask for anybody for themselves. Why bother? Church, the enemy knows how to hit you and where to hit you and when to hit you. If he can't get to you, he will get to you through your children. I wish I can have an amen. amen. If he can't get to you, he will get to you through your children. You will blame the school where they are right now. You will blame the stage in their lives. You will blame the friends that they keep. So we see that more than praying for them, we need to bring them to the presence of God. They need to worship God with us. That is the main point for this sermon. I will worship God with my children. They may not understand right now all the things that we are saying, but I will bring them to God. It is not my job to make them understand. It is my job to present them before God. Let the children come to me, says the Lord Jesus Christ. Pharaoh says, keep the children in me. Remember, church, as I was saying, it is not just Moses. It is God. God said, let my people go. I will have these people to myself. They will love me and they will worship me and me alone. They will not be left behind in the world while others are going to come to me. Let my people go. They will be my flock and I will be a shepherd to them. They will be my people delivered from Egypt, delivered from this crazy world. They will be a kingdom people, people of God, not just the parents, but the parents and the children. Let my people go. Oh, church, the world will always act like they agree with the church. But there's nothing further from the truth than that. It sounds like we agree. Go worship. We have to to worship. There is no agreement here. There is a stipulation. Leave some behind. Let things as it is. Let them grow. They're in a stage where they are disobedient. They will come right. Leave them behind with me. Pharaoh presents these dark forces of this world that we live in. The people of this world, the system of this world, does not acknowledge God. Pharaoh will not acknowledge God. He will not listen to the word of God. He will act like he's with you, but he's not with you. So never think that the world of your children. You can see all the programs, the good things that they do at school for the children. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, and amen. These things are very helpful. Our children are wise, they've got education, but never think that the enemy is influencing your children spiritually, and that what, that's what matters most. The, the world, the system of this world, they'll always resist. They will resist the commandments of God. Listen to Pharaoh, representing the world system, representing what you're looking at today. Exodus 5 verse 2. But Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice? Who is this Lord that I will obey his voice and let the Israel go? I do not know the Lord, and moreover will not let Israel go. Who is this God? That is the world. God had to send ten plagues to Pharaoh, but Pharaoh will not obey. That is a picture, that is a proof of the total depravity of the heart. The human heart is depraved, depraved from the truth. It will not hear nor obey the voice of God unless God himself come in and open that heart, come in and break through that heart and bring his own light to the heart. The human heart will never obey God. That is the way the system of this uh, environment where we are. It's the offer. Go, serve the Lord. There's a condition. Leave the children behind. And guess what? The children wants to be left behind. 
But what is the response? Verse 9. Moses says, We will go with our young and our old. We will go with our sons and daughters, with our flocks and our herds, for we must hold a feast to the Lord. We have realized, church, that the enemy targets God's people. He always wants to divide the family into two. They must be the worshippers of God and the non-worshippers of God in one family. He wants to divide them. He wants to think that it is okay. Given the circumstances, it's okay. That is how the world operates today. It is fine. You can go pray for your children. We even have this system of the world I have not heard around here, but where I come from here, people, when you go to church, are you going to church? Yes. Please pray for me. So you must stay at home. Somebody, somebody must represent you. What about you coming along and present your own case before God, showing God that you desire to be with him yourself? This is the system of the world. Given the circumstances, it is okay. We will go and leave our children behind. But Moses, in response, he refused the offer. We need men to stand up for their families against the enemy. It is a pity that in most cases, it is women who are standing up against the enemy. Women are standing up before God for their children and their drunk husbands. It is a pity. That's how things are. You don't believe me? And I'm talking in general. It was women who risked their lives to save their children from Pharaoh in chapter number two. It was women who said, we will not kill our own children. What did men do? We heard nothing. They were silent. They suggested nothing. They carried on and made bricks and just continued to be slaves. As long as they get garlic and cucumber, it was okay. But women had to stand and says, not with our children. It was women or women who stood and cried at the cross. At the sight of the crucifixion of Jesus, women stood there and cried. All the leading men, the spiritual ones who said they will die with him. Those who went and, 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 and take out demons and cast demons, they, 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 they were given power, they left, they fled. John was standing there, silent. He wouldn't even have I say, I was with him. He was standing there. Women were crying, showing that they know the men. They have pity of what is happening. This is our child, not with our children. They stood there, although they didn't have power. They didn't have men to stand with them. It was women, or women, sorry, women who stood up, went, woke up early in the morning, went to the tomb of the Lord Jesus Christ, even though they didn't know how they're going to move the stone, they still woke up in the morning, went to the tomb. Where was men? They went fishing. It is women today flying in the churches praying for their children and drunk husbands, as I was saying. But Moses is setting up a stage for men. Moses is leaving a challenge behind. He sets a goal for all men. Men, you can allow anything that you want to want it to happen in your own house if you wish, but never allow the compromise of worship of God. That is what Moses said. Never allow the enemy to keep your children in the world. That is Moses. You must stand up. Moses will not be happy that he will be free to worship God and leave the children behind. So he says, not without our children. Actually, not without my children. But Moses didn't even have a child in Egypt. He left his children in Midian. But he says, not with our children. He counts God's, chi God's people's children, his children. Not with our little ones. He stands. Not without our children. So what we learn here in Moses' response is that we must stand up for our children against this world system. We must pray for our children. We must refuse the enemy to keep and to own them. But above all, our children, they also need to know that we love them. How are they going to know that we love them? When we drag them, when we bring them before God. They may not like it, but that's love. They must know that we pray for them. 
That is, that's how they will know that we love them. They must know that we want them to walk in the light of Christ by teaching them the things of Christ. They must know that we want them not to repeat the same mistake that we made. This very mistake that almost ended us, ended us in hell. They must know that we don't want them to repeat the same. It might sound good and nice, but it's not something to do. We almost ended in hell. They must know that when we say wrong is wrong, wrong is wrong, and show them through the light of scripture. But above all, they must know God must be number one in their lives. That is why we say not without our children, because God comes first. So the things that they wish for, the things that they want to do, God first. If they want wisdom, God first. If they want, they want clarity of life, God first. If they want guidance in life, God first. It is our responsibility that the children knows that God loves them. It is our responsibility that the children knows that we are fighting to their nail before the enemy for them. The enemy must know also that the children are co-worshippers of God with us. The response is simple. Moses said, we will not obey the enemy. That is what we need to say. He says, we will not obey the enemy. We will not allow the enemy to dictate. He must not dictate how we worship God. We will not allow him. We have heard the voice of God. Why must we allow him? Moses says, we have heard the voice of God. He says, come out. Come out, my people among them. Come out and worship me. We have heard the voice. He says, you are my people. I am your God. You are my sheep. The sheep of my pasture. Come out, out of them. Show them the way you live that you are coming out. The places you go is not the same as the places they go. Come out, out of them. The choices you make in life are not the same choices that they make. Come out of them. Your priorities of life are not the same as the priorities that they make in life. Come out of them. You don't get entertained by the things that entertain them. Though it may be sinful, but they can continue to be entertained by them. Come out of them. Come out, my people. But as you listen to come out, my people, you need to remember that the enemy will always stand at the door. There is Pharaoh standing at the door, acting like he's opening the door, but the door is not yet open. He wants you to make the choice that is wrong. Go serve your, your God, but leave the children behind. The door is always half open. You must make the choice to do the wrong. So that he says, I did not make him do. He made it a choice. The enemy stand at the door and says, no, go nowhere. But if you go somewhere, don't go too far. Don't leave behind that, that which is good in Egypt. Leave your children behind. Stay bound to me. Remain my slave. I have lots of garlic and cucumbers for you here in Egypt. Why run to God? He only promises you things. He has not given you anything yet, but I can give you something. Stay. Have your one foot in the church and the other on the street. Stay. Why make the children, why, why make the church of God different from the world? That's all star. Make, make people be comfortable. Let them come in church and enjoy and worship God the way they want to worship God. Let them not miss the world because they will go back. Build the world in the church. But put a souvenir, something sweet on top in the name of Jesus. Put that bumper sticker on the car. But don't go to church. Upload this, the, 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 the richer status on the WhatsApp and stay at home. The gathering of believers is not important. They will pray for you. Just show them that they're a Christian. For God so loved the world that he... Just put it to the status. Everybody will understand that we're a Christian. I've seen many non-Christian people good status about God. They don't even know God. But the enemy will say, just, just do it so. Don't, don't, don't commit to the body of Christ. But Moses says, no, we are going nowhere without our children. We are going nowhere. Well, Moses not only saying not without our children. He says not without our livestock, not without our flocks, not without our herds. But Pharaoh says, no, 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 no. It's okay. You can go, but leave your stuff behind. Go, leave your finances behind. 
Don't give in the church. Just sit there and do nothing. Don't give the tenth. It's your money. After all, you accumulated all this wealth. All this, we have got it from the world. Leave it in the world. You got this livestock here in Egypt. Why you take it away? Leave your children, you got them from here. Leave your livestock here. Go worship God. Leave. Leave everything behind. Don't bring your money to the church. Oh, church, what an evil tactic that the enemy is using even today. Not just to keep the children of God from Egypt. To keep the children of God in Egypt. But that they may keep their, their finances in their pockets. Just to disobey God. Why is Pharaoh doing so? Because Pharaoh is not a fool. The enemy is never a fool. He knows that once he has their stuff, if he can have their children, if he can have, he can have their finances the most, their finances, if he can have that in the world, he will keep their mind and their heart in the world. If it belongs to Pharaoh, if it is left behind to Pharaoh, wherever you are, you will remember Pharaoh and the money and the children. You will never be free. Who is happy that he's in church, his children are on the streets? No one is happy for that. Your heart will always cry out, Pharaoh wants that. The children must be in the world so that we are not free to worship God. So that we even forget that it all depends on God and you put so much pressure in yourself. I should have done better. What? Leave your livestock, keep it here. But church, we know where your heart is, that's where your money is. That is why he says, leave it behind. Moses says, not without our children, not without our flocks. So the scripture is clear, church parents must always stand up and fight for their children. But standing is not good enough. They must be on their knees for their children. You cannot win some fight standing. You will win them on your knees. Parents must be on their knees for their children, saying, not without my children. When you read the Bible, you find parents on their knees for children. Coming to Jesus, don't pray for us. Children, they pray for us. But it is not their primary focus. It should not be their primary focus. It is not their primary responsibility to pray for their parents. It is parents' responsibility to pray for their children. The whole New Testament, parents are running around looking for Jesus for their children. But we're sitting around talking in general waiting for our children to pray for us, teaching them wrong, teaching them that it's a pity, sending them to schools, that they may have good education so that they can actually, when they grow up, they can support us when we're sitting at home and nothing to do. Let the children grow, let the children go. But no, even marriages are, are in, ruin, in ruins right now. One partner wants to support the parents, the other partner's parents are okay. He thinks, or she thinks, it's his responsibility to make sure that the mother gets a good house. And of course, there's nothing wrong with that. But it should not be a, necess a necessity. It should not be a primary focus for the children to raise up their parents. It is the parents who must raise up the children. But the system of the world, because we leave, we leave the children in the world. If you go with the children, you will let the children grow and you let the children go. Church, there is only one way to respond to the enemy. It is to obey God and demand God's glory. Let my people go. We are going, but not without our children. But here's the last thing that you must know. The enemy does not give up. He threatens them. Now he gave the offer. They respond by saying no. Now he's threatening them. Verse number 11. The Lord be with you if ever I let you and your children go. Only the Lord will save you from me if you just live here. That's what he's saying. The Lord be with you if I ever let you and your little ones go. So this is a lesson. We need to remember that once you reject the enemy's offer, you will be threatened. He's bringing threats. 
He's saying here in verse number 11, do you really think I will let you go with your children? I'm going to hold fast to your children. If you do so and you live with them, I will hunt you down and you will... You know, that's the enemy. You must be angry at him. You will know me, he says. Like I was saying, they say, Go! But if you go with your little one, you will see what I'm made of. That's why they caught him bearing your meal. That's right, that's very beautiful, eh? That was not serious, I'm so shitty. That's another one. Hmm. Abaye bati, Yoshuana, Unge, and Katuga. Hmm? Last one. Tanfun zoom tons. Or else that what I'm mandy. All those things mean the same thing. You will suffer the consequences. That is what the enemy is saying. You will suffer the consequences. He's threatening Moses with evil. Guess what? He's threatening with evil while God has promised good. Now the question is, which one melts your heart? God has promised good, the enemy is threatening with evil. Which one really occupies your heart and mind? Is it God's promises or the evil's threats? He says, we are going nowhere with the children. You will worship alone, not with your children. You will worship here then if you make the choice of taking your children. You would rather worship here in the land. You're going nowhere. You will build your tents here. Why worship here? So that you worship in my terms. That is why. He wants to worship worldly so that you're worshiping in his terms. He says, it's okay. It's fine. Go and worship the Lord. But you're not going with your children. If you want to go, don't go too far. If you go too far, remember, you've got your children, your livestock back here. So don't go too far. Let's compromise. It's okay. Go to Sunday. Go to church on Sunday. But live like the world from Monday to Friday. It's okay. From Monday to Saturday. It's okay. Stay, stay, be a part of us. Be one with us. Don't be too holy now. You will chase all your, your lovely friends away. Remember these friends who loves you. That they want to send you the birthday messages. Your church does not even do that. Be, be holy. They'll be gone. So, let's compromise a little. And you'll be fine. If you go too far with this Christianity, how far are we going to go? He's asking these questions. How are you going to enjoy life? Because you need to enjoy life. You live once, Bella, remember? You live once. Go worship, but don't live. Have some fun with us. But Moses responds and says, God said, let my people go. They must go far from you. Not just far from you. They must go far from your systems. The system of this world, the evil of this world. They must go worship God in spirit and truth, not without our children. Why would Moses say so? I've said it before. He knew that was the will of God. If he says, let my people go, that includes the children. God's covenant includes the children of the church. I might speak like some who baptize children now, but that's not what I'm saying. But God's covenant includes the children of the church. Because the Bible says, the promise is for you and your children. The children of the church. God wants the children of the church to be church. Because church includes the children of the church. That's why we've got Sunday school, we've got all the things. That's why Jesus says, allow the children. That is why Moses will say, not without our children. It's our duty to pray for these children. Our duty to fight for our children, tooth and nail. But as you do that, as you do that, remember, there are consequences. The devil says, I'm coming after you. He may not get hold of you, like I said. He will come through your children. He'll be bringing evil after you. That's what he's saying. That's the only thing he can do. 
he will bring evil after you. Why? You chose to say, not without my children. You chose to say, I'll worship God with my children. So all that we need to protect our children is to bring them to God in prayer and bring them physically into the house of God. We need to reject the devil's offer. We will not worship God at your times. We will not worship God without our children. Pharaoh says, leave the children behind. God says, bring the children unto me. Which one is going to be? Moses says, not without our children. Of course, church, our children go through stages in life. And sometimes there's confusion. But remember, the devil comes in at that time like a flood to use that stage of life that the children may, may be disobedient, that he will lead them astray. So lead the children to God, for the devil wants to lead them astray. Of course, when the children disobey, I'm not saying don't smack them, smack them. But remember, we're not fighting against flesh and blood. This is not the war between flesh and blood. We need to read between the lines. Moses says, not without our children. Parents, not without our children. Children, do not allow the devil to keep you behind God's worship. You should be able to say, we are going nowhere without our parents. Nowhere without our parents. If you lead me that way, I'm taking my parents with me. Let's see if my parents will say that's the right way to go. May the good Lord be praised. May his weight find a place in our hearts. May we always remember the future of God's church is the children, not without my children. Most of the parents never, they did not get into Canaan. It was the children who got into Canaan. What does that tell you? God has put the future of the church in the hands of his children. We just paving the way, not without my children. Pair children, not without our parents. God bless you all.